Right. So thank you. So box and whisker plots, really helpful to compare uh, two bits of data, but of the same of the same type, right? So if we had, uh, we're looking at babies' weights, it's these babies' weights compared to the other babies' weights, like boy babies compared to girl babies. We can't, hmm? we're not comparing the baby's weights with the baby's size or the length, right? To do that, we use this thing, right, which is bivariate data where we make a scatter plot. So we might have something going along the x-axis, something going along the y-axis, and we see are they connected in any way, shape, or form. So what is something that could be connected? We taught last lesson about um, fertilizing. So the more fertilizer you put, the, the bigger, the, um, the taller the plant will grow, and so on and so forth. Does it keep on going and going? It cannot go forever because you'll kill the plant because you put too much fertilizer. So you've got to sort of keep and be realistic. Uh, volleyballers, the taller you are, the possibly the higher the jump or the reach that you could get, correct? They're related. Probably. Um, what about, what else with athletes? I mean, you could do um, schoolwork. The more that you study, the better your grades you get. So one is causing the other. One is dependent on the other. Shh. Thank you. Now, for those people who weren't here last lesson, we are reminding you, or not reminding, but we're telling you, how do we do a scatter graph? We appreciate that, look at this massive formula. Those of you who continue to annoy me, I'm going to make you work this out. Those who don't annoy me, you'll be going, oh yeah, I, this just pops up on my calculator as our correlation coefficient. Um, and we've got the R, but we've also got an R squared value. Now, the closer we are to 1 or minus 1, the stronger the relationship is between the two um, things that we've measured. Okay? Um, just because one's negative doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means as something increases, the other one will decrease as opposed to both of them are increasing. But all good, all good, all good. Um, obviously, if it's bleh, random, no correlation. So you can look at this and you can then give it a rating. Oh, very strong. Strong. Feels like I'm talking about T. Moderate. Weak. Weak tea. That's like you just wave the bag over your hot water. All right. Anyway, how do we pop this into our calculator? So, our oh, father son. So, the son's height, is it related to the father's height? We could do our own little experiment on that. But anyway, so how do we pop this into our calculator? For those people who weren't here, who's going to suggest what we do? And I'll repeat it into the microphone. Unless, Noah, you could grab the mic and pass it along. You want to tell us how we do it? You don't know. All right. So we've got a don't know. We go to our calculator. Where are we going to go? We go into stats. So hopefully by now we're going menu. And even though, yes, we could put your arrow key across, we're getting used to using our shortcut. So we press number two, 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 two. Okay. We put our list, our data in list one and one in list two. Now, when you already have data here, you're better off deleting the whole lot just in case it keeps on going and you, you know, so see what I'm doing? I went more, delete all. And I hope some of you are now just rolling your eyes because you go, I know how to do this now. And they're not so scary, these calculators. All right. So back to our book. And because I can't keep them both up at the same time, we're just going to type. I might make my own up, really. <laughs> 175, 183. Let's see how good I am. Who's got their book open? 175, 183. You don't have to listen to me here. I'll just, that's to the video I'm talking. Sorry, video, you will have to, because when I pause it, the um, where I enter goes right over where I have to record. So bad luck. You can just skip along. 183, 170, 167. I'm just going to put the first four in because I've lost all feeling and caring about putting these in. 
and people at home don't want to watch me put all of them in, but let's assume that I have. 167178. If you want to put them all in, you can, but you'll see in a minute this is not rocket science. 167. Uh, I mean, I could get up and go get my textbook so I could look at it and type it in, but I'm having a lazy Tuesday. Please join me. Yeah, we are having a lazy lesson. I don't think you have to write too much at all. Uh, no, it's not your room. That was a, can he put his feet up? Oh, actually, JP, if you just turn that chair around, he could. All right, so if you haven't finished typing in the data for list one and list two, that's okay, you can stop. As long as you've got an even number in both. It's not going to like it if you've got something here um, in five, but you haven't got a matchy-matchy in list two. Okay, so everybody good? You could make up data, I don't care. All right. Maya, do you remember what we do next? We are trying to graph it, absolutely. So shall I just, we go to graph? And then can I, good, before you just press graph one, you have to set it. Now what type of graph are we wanting? Right, not a median box, so we have to go down, change it, scatter, yep. And we want our X data in list one, and we want our Y data in list two. Okay, um, what did we learn last time? You could, if you wanted to, scroll down and you can change your little mark type here. Uh, who was it? Zara, was that you, Zara? That changed all the colors of all of them. It's like, wow, I couldn't do that. That was so very good. So feel free to play around with your calculator. Anyway, we press exit, you press graph. Now remember, you're gonna have more dots than me, possibly. Is everyone happy that they've got dots there? Okay, what we are trying to do, I'll just pause. What we're trying to do is get a line of best fit that goes through as many of those dots as possible because then we can use it to predict or find out um, <clears throat> other things. So if I then go, oh, what is the temperature after 20 minutes? I can actually pop that into the equation of the line that I have. Does that make sense? Now. What we said last time is we could do long-winded and try and pick two points on the line, work out the slope, find the equation of a line, but guess what? Our calculator is going to do that for us. So we go calc, we want a linear model, so I press F2. It asks us how do you want the line to be written? I'm just going to choose the first one, F1. And this gives me now my equation, so if it says write it down, I'll be writing y equals, what's my a? 1.1, so that's your slope. So is this a positive correlation or negative? Positive, it's increasing. And your b value, aka your y-intercept, is minus 34. Now, here's your r. See how it's 0.9? Yeah, yours is going to be different because you put more data in. I only put four as a slacker. So see here, you've got your R value. The closer that is to one, the stronger the correlation is. So no formula for us. We just read it off our calculator. We've got two buttons here. If we press F6, draw, it actually draws it in. That's cute to look at, but no good for us. So I go back to F1. I go to copy. And you can see it takes me to my graphing function. Now, I've got a few graphs there, but anyway, I'm going to overwrite. If I didn't want to lose these graphs, I could use my arrow keys and go down to a spare spot. But I really don't care if I lose these graphs. Oops. So I just pop it in there. Seems like nothing's happened. Go back to our graphing menu and hello, there she blows. So I did this really quick, Noah. Ready? We go menu. I'm now going into the graphing mode. F and, and number five, and whatever your equation is, it should be there. If it's not, you didn't press enter to copy. Is yours there? So do it again, you watching? Watching, so I was in number two, 
I did my graph. I graphed it. I calculated. I chose linear. I chose the first one. And I'm going to copy. And I have to press. Yep. I have to press EXE. And that pops it in there. Because when I press enter, it pops me back into stats mode. So if I want to now get back into my graph, I'm here. So I now I select that graph. I have to go and deselect all the others. And huzzah. I get my line. Why do I need this? Well, now I can go G solve and I can get Y calc, X calc, and away we go. <clears throat> Happy days? <clears throat> Happy days. Now, hello, thank you. Girls. Girls. Now, if I wanted some data beyond the data that I have, so if, see here, imagine this is at, I don't know, when time is 20. And I wanted to know, yeah, no, but you're talking and you're not listening to this bit. So this was, time was 20, temperature was 40, okay? If I then wanted to know what's the temperature going to be when the time is 30, I'm outside of my data. Who remembers what that's called? Extrapolation. That's right, extrapolation. If you go, what? I'm never going to remember this. It is in your book a look. So when you're in the data that you have and you're reading off, interpolation when it's beyond the data that you have or before extrapolation. You're going to be able to use this to predict further relationships. Does that make sense? All right. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun because who has used Excel before? Oh, very good. So you can help us out. We're going to do everything that we've just done, but we're going to do it on Excel. So the first thing, the first thing can I ask you to do, and some have already done it, which I appreciate, can you go to Daymap and can you click on this baby data and you should get this Excel spreadsheet that has this data in it. So I'll give you a couple of minutes. Just do First of all, when you opened it, it would have had it here, soccer. But if you click on the tabs below, um, you can see that you can add more sheets. I've already got sheet three open. If you click on this little plus sign, you can put more sheets, as many as you want, okay? Now, who's never used Excel before? Excellent. There's a few. Um, people who have, why is it so good? Yep. It says, so people say it does it for you. Yep, it is actually, it is a calculator, and it will even do all your graphs and everything. So if you pop this in, if I go, I'm going to go 6 plus 8, and I'm just, oops, putting anywhere, and I go, oh, well, that's not really a good calculator. It's just done 6 plus 8. Watch what happens now if I press equals 6 plus 8. It actually works it out for you, right? So an equal sign tells the little cell, work it out, please. But, you know, being me, I've changed my mind and I don't want to go 6 plus 8 anymore. I now want to make it 10 plus 8. Why? I'll have to, if I've done this, I have to go in and change it myself. So it's better if I do this. I go 6 in one cell and get used to it. This cell we call E3. Yeah? So in F3, I'm going to pop the 8. Now, in E4, I go equals. Instead of saying 6 plus 8, I click on this 6. Can you see how it's come up as E3? And then I say plus, and I click on that cell. It's F3. And now when I press enter, it's like, yeah, big whoop, it's 14. But here's the joy. I now change this 6 to 10, and that changes automatically. I know. So whenever you use spreadsheets, you really want to always try and refer to cells because then if you change one thing, everything else fills down and changes automatically. I love it. Something to play with here, go to column H. This is you, Noah. 
go to column H and we're going to go one and then two. So, as Ella just said, now be careful because you've got to listen to this. You highlight the pattern. So, I'm highlighting one and two. So, I've got one and two highlighted. See how it's a white cross here? If I move it to the corner, you can see that it changes to a black cross. Right? White cross, black cross. Right? Hold your mouse button down and drag. Oops, I didn't do that nicely. Undo, control Z. All right? Drag it down and it will automatically copy. Right? Because you just highlight, if you did one, 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 one. So, watch what happens. If you do one. Yep, watch. If you do one and you do two and you just highlight two, you haven't highlighted both, this will now just copy down two, two, two. Right? If you do, you didn't highlight both because it would have done it otherwise. You've just done one and you've pulled it down. So you've got to highlight the pattern. Shh. It doesn't just do it for one and two. Check it out. It could be five, ten. Right? Highlight the pattern. Scroll down and you've got it. I'm deleting everything. Delete. I put the delete. No, you'll figure out that if you just press backspace, you just cover one. You press the delete. Now, <clears throat> like it. Now, ready for this bit. Last bit, hello. Gentlemen, we're watching. You have time to play with this in a minute. No, what you doing? All righty. Um, now let's take our. You got ten and eight somewhere there. So in E three and F uh, F three. So. Now I have to wait again. All right, once again, I want to do one, two, three down the page, but I'm just going to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to put here, I'm going to put with a one, and then underneath I'm going to say equals this, and I'm going to say plus one, and press enter. So I'll do that again. I put the one in D4 underneath it, I've gone equals and I've gone the cell above it. So I've clicked D4 plus one, enter. So I've got D4 plus D1. Everyone happy? Now, when I go to fill down, I've only got the two. My, I haven't highlighted the pattern. I've just highlighted cell with the two in it, white cross to black cross, fill it down. And, what, and yeah, you go, yeah, big deal. You've got one, two, three. But look at the formula. See how it's now D5? And I scroll down, it's now D6, D7, D8, and so on. Yeah? Yep. So when you fill down, it actually copies and it increases D4, D5, D6, D7, and so on. So <clears throat> what I now want to do in this cell here, I want to add 10 to every one of these. So I'm going to go equals this cell here plus the 10. Enter. Now, when I fill down, this time it's not going to go well because I didn't keep adding 10. Look what happened. So here I've gone. So you might have to look at the board for this bit and then you can play with yours. You've got D4 plus E. Hang on. And then this one, it's gone D5. So yes, I want the two, but I don't want to add. What's it adding? It's adding on E4. I want it to add on the 10, E3. How do I make it just add this on and not keep filling down? It is magic. You come up here. And in front of the three, see how it's got E3? I'm going to ask you to put a dollar sign. And now, when I fill that down, 
Can you see my formulas now? So look up here in this cell. The E3 does not change. See how it stays as E3? So the dollar sign says don't keep going. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It stops it. Whereas there's no dollar sign in front of that four, the D4, so that keeps going. D4, D5, D6, D7, and so on. You can feel down. You can even feel across. So if I feel across, instead of going D, who thinks what that, what's going to be that? Instead of D, it's going to be E and F and G and so on. So your spreadsheets, you got music? Play nicely. Your spreadsheets are groovy little suckers. So sometime this lesson, I've got five more minutes that I'm going to eat Jabber Jaws and then you can play with your spreadsheets. Can we click onto babies? Oh, sorry, by the way, with spreadsheet um, down here, your right click is your bestie. So you right click and you can change the color. You can even rename it, okay? So do that when you feel like it. All right, let's hit babies. Hello, babies. <clears throat> The plot and I'm going to do it on this length. So I'm going to click up here and I'm going to highlight. So hold your shift key down or whatever, however it floats your boat. Highlight that column. We all done it? Okay. Doesn't matter if you haven't highlighted the whole thing or not. We go up to insert. Insert. Everyone happy? Now yours might Oh, no, yours should look the same as mine, although mine might be a slightly older version. I'm not quite sure. Can you find this one here? Okay. Hit your arrow key. Oh. Box and whisker, baby. But I've only got one. We'll fix that in a minute. Let's play with this. <clears throat> this is a little bit of wasted space here, is it not? So if you click on your scale, right click, mm, no, mine's not working, click out, yeah, there you go. Can you see, double click and now right click, try that again. So sometimes you might need to click out, whatever, but you need to see how your box comes up and then right click and you should have format axes. And you can actually here change your minimum. So what would you like my minimum to be? I'm going to go 40. I want to have a bit of a buff. So I'm going to change it to 40. And it spreads out a little bit nicely. If you actually click on the doodad itself, what's that called? The box itself. And now right click. No. What did I do? Ugh. Click out of that. So just right click. Um, it should say show data. What's going on there? Select format data? No. Yeah. It doesn't say so. No, mine says show on my other one. Cancel. Oh. Format. Anyway, on mine, there is an option where it should be um, show data. Format, maybe it says show. Show inner points, inclusive. Anyway, we'll go and fiddle with that in a minute. Um, you can add axes and whatnot. Select two. So you have to use your control key. All right, so... We would want to compare, and I need to make this smaller because it's harder on the keyboard for me. There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> and I need two hands. So, sorry, putting the mic down. Hope you can still hear me. Um, so, I'm going to do the length. So, I highlight the length. Yeah. And now, hold down your control key. And you should then be able to highlight the second length without highlighting everything else in between. Takes a little bit of playing. So we'll go again. I know it's hard. People at home, you can't see what I'm doing, but 
So you highlight using your shift, right? Holding down your left mouse button or whatever, you highlight this. Did yours work? Now hold your control. Find your control key. Hold your control key down. Keep it held down, right? Keep holding your control. And now I've clicked in this and I'm dragging it down. Okay? So you have to, yeah, it's a little bit of um, hold your control key down. Now, if you haven't done that, could you just watch so you can practice in a minute? Yep, hang on. Thank you. If you didn't do that, I'll come around and help you. But those who can, you can help each other as well. So we've highlighted. Watching? When we go insert. When we go insert and I go up here again and I go to box and whisker. Oh, it's unhighlighted because I clicked elsewhere. Okay. I've got to do it again. Yeah. One. Right, so I've highlighted, I go insert, I go to my box, I go to my whisker, and you can see that I get two. Shh. Guys, can we please just stay? This is the last bit, and then you can fiddle. Ready? What else do we want to do? Scatter plot. Seriously? And we watch. You got to watch and you got to fiddle at the same time. So if you didn't get the box and whisker, I'll show you in a minute. And people next to you can show you. We want to now do our scatter. If you want to, be ready. I am going to do the age and the weight because as the baby gets older, we're assuming that it's going to get heavier. Makes sense. That would be a reasonable correlation. So. We've highlighted that. Once again, we go to insert. This time, instead of the bar, see the one beneath it? We want to scatter. Now, I don't want it to. Ooh. <laughs> well, that's not very good. I don't want it to um, be any of the others and join it. I want the scatter one there, so I click on it. Right? Has everyone got that? Yeah. If you haven't... Right, if you haven't, please look at the board. Please look at the board right now. Frick. If you haven't got it, look at the board and you'll be able to do this or you can look back and I'll help you again But looking. Got this? You click on one of the data sets and you'll find, so I did with my uh, left mouse key, I click and can you see how they've all highlighted? Right, so you, I'll do that again. You just click with your left and they all highlight. Now, as they're highlighted, I click with my right. What can you see over here? Mm, don't do that. Can you see this one? What do you think trend line is? The line of best fit. So if you click that, it draws it in now. There's more. Wait, there's more. Look on the right-hand side. Yep. So you can see this has probably got a slight curve to it that you could even fit an exponential or whatever. But we're going to stick with linear. That's all we have to worry about for now. But look down here. So you can stand up if you want to. You can see display the equation. <gasps> Do we want that? Yes. So we're going to tick that. Do we want to display the R squared value? Yeah. What's that about? The closer it is to one, the stronger the correlation will be. Yes. So why not? Let's click it. Correlation means the connection between the two. Right? So if there's a strong correlation, right? If there's a strong correlation, it forms pretty much a straight line or a line. If it is like random and there's no pattern, right? A little bit random like this, that's a weak correlation okay it's positive because it's increasing it's negative if it's decreasing anyway back to our spready sheeting say that carefully um, <clears throat> you can move that click on that and you can actually move it you can format it make it bigger make it smaller all stuff that you want to do and you can add your axes and all that sort of stuff huzzah so what you're going to do is with your babies you're going to play around oh what you're going to play around, you're going to make some stuff, you're going to see if you can make 
Don't make babies. I said that wrong. Do not. No making babies. No. You're playing around. Psst. For the rest of this week, for the rest of this week, you are then going to actually analyse. This is real data. This is from the FIFA 2018 World Cup. Um, I didn't get all of the players. I just took a selection. Um, I didn't. I just random. So we've got the goalkeeper and we've got the midfielder. And you are going to do some analysis on that and write it up. So in, well, I hope it is. So this is your task over here that you are going to, not this one, not your task. That's what we just played with then. But this is you and you're going to have to actually write a report. Right? Well, if you can get it done by the end of the week, you have no holiday homework. Anyway, so as we get stuff, I want you to get used to using, so you're going to do it using your calculator, one box and whisker plot and do it on paper. You are going to do one with the calculator, uh, calculator, the spreadsheet, because I love spreadsheets and I'll help you format and whatever. We got the gist? So, sorry, that took longer for me to say than I needed to, but now you play and I'll come around and help and people who are happy to help their friends do so. Any questions? But this thing here in the blue is basically what you will have to do, give me a uh, written report. And there were actually, would you believe, they broke it down into, uh, there was goalkeepers, midfielders, forwards, there was one other one. Could be defenders. You will be handing it up, yes. Now, someone just said when, when you had already asked when, and this is what just you did. We said, when is it due? And I said, if you do it by the, no. Correct. If you can hand it up by the end of this week, that's great. Otherwise, you've got holiday homework. So, correct. All right. Good luck. The stuff in blue is what you need to basically have done. You're writing a report comparing and contrasting the physical attributes of the soccer goalkeeper and the forwards from the given data. Now, you don't have to do every single connection with the soccer people, right? You can say so lots and lots. When we did the babies and we did the months with the weight, I would say we've got a correlation there, correct? I think it would be sensible for you to talk about the fact, do you believe there will be, predict, is there going to be a correlation between the age and the height of a goalkeeper? No. Why not? That was a no, by the way. They're fully grown adults and it doesn't sort of work that way anymore with the older you get, the fatter you get. Otherwise, we would have a whole lot of old, well, they might, you might say there are old people. I mean, my poor old aunt who's 102. Whoa. You'd expect her to be massive, but she's a skinny little thing. So it doesn't carry on with that. And that's something that you might want to discuss, okay? Ella might decide that she's going to compare the height of the goalkeeper with the height of the midfielder, okay? And the age of the goalkeeper with the age of the midfielder. She doesn't then have to do the weight and the weight. Yeah, that's for box and whisker plots. So you have to do two box and whiskers and two scatter graphs. It doesn't have to be all. One has to be done with the calc, one has to be done on Excel. So spread it around. Does that make sense? You have to do two scatter graphs. Coops, you might actually want to graph, you might actually want to graph the age against the height to show that there is not a correlation. And then you have to talk about it, right? And it's not a five pages about, it's just a couple of sentences going why you got what you got. Does that make sense, Pete? Yeah. So this is not meant to be all encompassing, but it is going to take a little bit of time to, you know, format your graphs nicely, get to learn Excel. We good? Love you. Goodbye. Do some work. JP.